everyone to the third in this series of the Canub Show. How are we doing, Matt? We all right? Fantastic. Thanks, Jimmy. Looking forward to a big 2021. Yes, yeah. It's going to be excellent. Going to be excellent. Last year was good. This year is going to be better. So we've got uh, we've got some cracking stuff on the show tonight. Tell them what we've got, Matthew. All right, folks. Lock yourselves in. First up, we've got Nina with the news brought to you by MMJ Daily for all your MMJ cannabis news from around the world. Jump onto mmjdaily.com. We're also going to have Tim Oates from Delta Tetra. These guys have their finger on the pulse in Europe in terms of compliance, uh, policies, everything going on and a really big help for cannabis growers setting up everywhere. We're then going to have Ivan Castells join us for our product spotlight. Ivan's from a company called Rome Technology and they make Sam, which uh, everyone in Royal Brinkman certainly knows as the biggest thing in water treatment at the moment. After that, we're going to have our tech tip from Marco Jimenez at Green Bros. Those guys are the world leaders in dry cannabis trimming and also a bunch of other really cool machines. He's going to give us a tech tip on post-harvest treatment. After that, mate, it's all beer and Skittles. We'll hit the road. I'm down for the beer and Skittles. <laughs> Let's throw over to Nina with the news. Welcome to the Cannabis News, brought to you by MNJ Daily. Jazz Pharmaceuticals has acquired GW Pharmaceuticals for $7.2 billion. GW Pharmaceuticals is the first company that developed cannabis-based medicines. The Pidiolex, the first cannabis medicine approved by the FDA, and the Satifex, which got approved in the AU. The move by Jazz Pharmaceuticals represents the biggest acquisition in the cannabis space to date. Such an acquisition shows increasing interest of Big Pharma in the disrupting potential of cannabis-based medicines as product innovation continues. Too much cannabis in Canada? Health Canada has released data for October last year, pointing out that there are more than 1 billion grams of cannabis being stockpiled by producers throughout Canada. As commoditization happens at a quicker pace than expected, there is one way out of this oversupply. Health Canada's upcoming ruling on whether allow CBD as an ingredient for over-the-counter products. Mads Peterson has chosen to step down as president of Aurora Euro to focus more on his own business ventures. I own different companies and I simply couldn't find the time to manage them all. And also have time to stay with my family, the Danish grower explained. His cannabis journey is not over yet. And he's developing medical cannabis varieties with his genetics company. France is setting up a medical cannabis experiment and has selected a number of companies that will supply this French program. These companies are Australia-based Altea and Little Green Pharma, Canada-based Aurora Cannabis and Tilray, Israel-based Panexia, and UK-based Emic Life Sciences. This was already the news of this month, brought to you by MMJ Daily. See you next month, giving you cannabis news in the month of March. Enjoy the show for now. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nina. Absolutely wicked presentation again. The news brought to you in conjunction with MMJ Daily. Jump on there, check it out. All the news from around the industry on a daily basis. Absolutely fantastic. Right, Manny Boy, what's up next? Mate, we have an absolute superstar from just around the corner from you, Tim Oates from Delta Tetra Consultancy. These guys are across all the hard stuff, uh, policy making, standard operating procedures, business direction strategy, um, these guys are experts in compliance. They're experts in all matters regulatory in the cannabis space. Without further ado, let's throw over to Timmy. Tim Oates, thanks for joining us on the Can Hub Show, episode three. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you again, Matt. Love it, mate. Love it. Last time we chatted, um, we had a lot of fun. So I'm sure this is going to be the same. Let's uh, let's open up talking a little bit about what's happening in Europe, a place that's really going off at the moment. What are you What are you seeing in Europe, and what are your thoughts? Europe's a really interesting space at the moment. 
principally because it's where everybody is harboring their hope for for growth and commercialization right for all these plans uh that they've built for the last three or four years not just in australia but in canada as well um having access to a market of this size is, is obviously going to be a massive addition to any revenue stream so there's a lot of interest in in europe and the principal reason for that is because they have quite a large patient access uh, pathway across the continent with very little production uh, here on the ground. So there's a massive gap to be filled. There's a lot of uh, a lot of product looking to be brought in, but there's still a lot of insecurity around the regulatory landscape at the moment uh, and how that product comes in. A lot of people are struggling with those uh, those compliance pieces to bring product through. Does the flour need to be GMP? Do we need to be producing oils that are coming through to supply the market or is it flowers predominantly right now? And so there's a lot of um, ambiguity, I think is probably the right term about Europe, but it poses a, a huge opportunity, um, which is why you're seeing so many groups going for the, the jugular in Europe at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's probably a good way to put it. And, um, you know, you, you mentioned the un uncertainty and the, um a little bit of a cloud over you know the products and you know mm. I'm, a bit, I'm a bit old school when i look at markets and i think yeah but you know it's all it's all heading back to um you know to an oil or uh a flower well, it, but yeah i mean it is and it, and it isn't it's it's super unique i mean you got to think about it like any other market right i know it's a medical market and it's pharmaceutically regulated but it's you know, its user base is still typical of any other market. So in your first sort of months and years, you're going to get the early adopters, right? People who are going to go out of their way to try and get a medical cannabis prescription, primarily because they're already using it and they want to legitimize that or ratify their usage, right? Yeah. And so those people who have been already using it, that are going to go out of their way to find a way of getting it legally, are going to want to continue their their um, program as they already have it, which is tr typically fed flour, right? Not many people are yeah. consuming tinctures and oils and things like that at home uh, on a kind of self medication, medicational or recreational basis. So that means that at the moment, the, the patient, patient cohorts will be looking to, to acquire flour, which is why you're seeing the majority of the deals that come through places like Germany, etc., are going to be focused on flour. It's yeah. also, you know, you can use Australia as a good case study for this as well. You know, in the early stages, our doctors were not very comfortable with it, um, you know, and prescribing it and controlling the dosage and things like that. So when you have patients who are used to using it, understand their, you know, their dosing um, regimens, etc., the doctor is going to follow a little bit of their lead. But as that doctor becomes more educated and the healthcare professionals understand the products better, then you'll start to see that steady uh, switch over to oils and more controlled final dose form. So it's this kind of catch 22 where, um, you know, initially it's going to be flour, which is what you're seeing right now. But the long term, medium to long term play will be oils and, you know, um, final dose form delivery methods that are patentable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess, uh, you know, from from my opinion and, and you know, the, the thought process that I'm having here is you're always going to have your, your old school consumer, um, you know, they love the, the experience of smoking or vaping, they love mm. the flavour hit, the terps, all those things that are really cool about dried flour, um, which, you know, certainly work in the favour of, of, of our hitting zone, um, being protected croppers and uh, involved traditionally with hydroponics. Um, you know, that's the gear yeah. we sort of love and the technology behind producing that AAA um, flower is, is, is where we're at and, you know, which is synonymous with Amsterdam and places like that. Um, well, it's about, it's about producing a quality product, right, at the end of the day. And, um, you know, flower, flower will always have its place um, for, for a lot of users because it is, the process is very therapeutic and, you know, um, I, I think you have a different experience with flour than you do with um, with products that go through the digestive system, you know, or, or other delivery mechanisms. Um, but it, but that's also that um, that that desire for for a quality product and, and a well-rounded flour product is what's also tripping up a lot of cannabis companies as well. Um, you know, they don't have the genetics that people are looking for in house. They 
aren't experienced in long-term cultivation methodologies like you would expect from traditional horticulture and so you know we've done a couple of case studies and, and worked on behalf of a couple of clients into europe and it was challenging because you're trying to sell a product no one wants you know the the strains that they have access to are not hitting the thc ratios that you that, that, that people are looking for they're not exciting they're old school 90s strains you know that people sort of grew up with but they're not competing with what the black market can do right now in terms of genetic diversity diversity of product and then quality of the of the all-rounded experience like you said focusing on not only cannabinoids but terpenes as well and that's something the medical industry or at least in a broader aspect is not doing particularly well i think there's a there's a personal element as well to traditional uh flower use, um, the actual process of preparing the flower um, uh, and using the flower is very, very personal. And obviously, from a from a professional uh, standpoint, health professional standpoint, dosing is, is so difficult um, with, with the traditional yeah. the delivery, isn't it? Yeah, it's really tough, you know, because it's so subjective. Um, and, you know, that's you hit on a really good point, the, the sort of the ritualization, I think, of the process of preparing flour rolling it putting it in a vaporizer or whatever it is it is a shame that our the western medicine doesn't hold much value in ritual um because i think that's something that they would use as a as a um a, an antithesis towards that that kind of um suggestion but i agree with you that it's really important and it's part of the experience for a lot of patients and you know to to kind of build on that um titrating dosing oils especially when you, you you're, it's going through the digestive system is really really difficult i mean <clears throat> even as a user personally who's very experienced you know with cannabis broadly speaking um edibles make me a little bit nervous because i don't know how they're going to react with me why well, I, I could try one one day and it'll have little to no effect at all and then you know one another day and i'll be climbing the walls so to speak right um whereas flour is it, it's much more immediate you know you don't have to wait an hour and see what happens and then what's done is done you can have a couple of little puffs on a joint or on a vaporizer and and the experience is much more manageable mm -hmm. um and i think that's something that should be embraced but you got you got to also understand from a pharmaceutical perspective we we don't love gray areas we like to know and to be able to predict outcome um and and control that outcome because otherwise it doesn't fall into the brackets of traditional pharmaceutical guidelines and that's part of the problem with cannabis on a whole as well is that it doesn't behave like a pharmaceutical and so trying to regulate it as such and force it into one of those categories is is quite challenging um mm. and so there's a whole raft of issues that stem from matt's one original question what are your thoughts on the gw pharmaceutical <coughs> sale uh, obviously made headlines around the world with a seven billion dollar sub seven billion dollar price tag what are your thoughts there and what do you think it means for european cannabis in general well i'm surprised i'm surprised it took so long to be honest with you um you know i mean gw pharmaceutical have been the principal operator out of the uk making britain one of the largest exporters of cannabis in the world single-handedly um, you know, there's not many businesses like that that have such a monopoly, especially in an established country like like the UK. Um, so I'm surprised it took so long. First and foremost, I'm completely unsurprised by the price tag. Um, you know, they they have IP behind them. You know, they have license for it. They are what every company is trying to get to in a medical environment, right? When you look at yeah. Australia, all these com companies aspiring to be proto pharmaceutical companies, and you know, hit those nice billion. Uh, dollar price tags etc what they're trying to emulate is gw um you know they've got a license they've cultivated on a, a pre-existing horticultural site they've developed um an actual product that they've taken through clinical trial data right exactly tick 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 um and they have assets there and um, it's not just a license to grow right everybody thinks that you get the license and then you're a you know 250 million dollar company no you need to go through clinical trials stability data to show indications for your products you need to be able to actually make something that's going to go into the medical market mainstream and you know gw pharmaceutical products have done that um, mm -hmm. and so you're not just acquiring a license holder you're acquiring a full a fully functioning commercialized business yes. um, so it, it doesn't surprise me at all but it also 
should reiterate to aspiring companies out there that the value is not necessarily in the holding of a license, but building a commercially viable company and that, and you're playing in a pharmaceutical space, you know, GW pharmaceutical have been doing this for 30 years, nearly, you know, mm. it took them 30 years to, to build something that was worth 7 billion. So, you know, it's, it isn't surprising to me. It's, it's more standard in my mind than any of the other boom or bust cannabis plays that we've seen, right? Um, Tilray and, and Afria and, and others have been going bananas on the, the stock markets this week because of, you know, a small reference or two from some um, US politicians around federal decriminalization, et cetera. And suddenly the stock price is up 1500% or something stupid. You know, these are, that's more surprising to me than, than a, the act, acquisition of an actual company. Timmy, obviously we want to have you back again on the show. It was Ace speaking as usual, getting your insights on the industry and unpacking, um, you know, the ins and outs of what can sometimes um, be very shrouded. So uh, really love your work, mate. Um, everyone, please jump on to deltatetra.com.au if you want to learn more about what Tim and the team can do to help your business. Please, um, yeah, drop him a line. Thanks very much, guys. It's an absolute pleasure, as always. I'm sure we could go for, for hours more. Maybe next time we can uh, touch on the Dutch coffee shop experiment, Matt, talk about some uh, changes in the Netherlands. It's a date, mate, for sure. Fantastic. I appreciate it. Oh. Always like a date with Matt. And Jim, it would be a pleasure <laughs> to have you there again, mate. There's no, da no date, Tim. We'll just meet up. <laughs> that sounds better. Take, yeah. Take care, guys. Thank you. <laughs> See you, chaps. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Tim Oates, our special guest on the Can Hub show. These guys are amazing at what they do. We'll get the details of Delta Tetra for anybody in Australia, Europe interested in utilizing their services. Jim, the show must go on. What do we have next? Next, Matthew, we have the fantastic in the spotlight feature. And in the spotlight, on this show is Huasan, brought to you by Rome Technologies. Absolute first class product. We do loads of it here in the UK through the Royal Brinkman. And uh, it's a fantastic product for treating that biofilm and breaking the life cycle of bacteria in your irrigation and general disinfectant. So take it away. <laughs> Welcome back to the Can Hub Show, guys. Today, we've got an absolute superstar from Rome Technology, Ivan Castells. He's going to talk to us about a really cool product they have called Huasan. Jimmy, over to you. Guys, if you've ever suffered with biofilms or pathogens in the water course and through your irrigation, blocked irrigation nozzles, all these little things that build up and create problems in your grow, problems that are unseen, they're inside the water course and you won't see them until it's too late. Ivan has the perfect solution to these problems. Ivan, tell us about Huasan. Spotlight. Thank you for having me over here, guys, and uh, making it possible that I can explain a bit about uh, the product we, we produce and uh, what is um, a part of the horti hygiene concept. Um, so our product, Huasan, is the original cerebral stabilized hydrogen peroxide. Um, it's a very stable, user-friendly product. Um, it's working uh, very effective against uh, all kinds of pathogens. Um, yeah, then we are talking about bacteria, virus, uh, fungi. Um, as I mentioned, it's very efficient and it's, uh, it's a long lasting product. Um, something very positive also about the product is that it's uh, working in a big temperature range. Um, so um, compared to a lot of other products, they have an optimum temperature. Huasan can do its job uh, in a big range. And the same with the pH spectrum. Ivan, um, can you tell us a little bit about Huasan um, and the difference between standard hydrogen peroxide in terms of 
how long is your standard hydrogen peroxide going to last and be effective compared to Huasan, which we see as a big step up? Um, of course, Huasan, um, as it's stable, as it's, it's, it's <coughs> sorry, um, okay. Huasan. As it's uh, a silver stabilized um, hydrogen peroxide, it's uh, traveling a lot further uh, through your irrigation lines. So that means um, it doesn't react out uh, as fast as the, the non-stabilized peroxide. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's much better and much easier to, uh, to get rid of all the pathogens and the biofilm, which is the breeding ground of your pathogens. Is that where the real biofilm, biofilm removal part of it happens? Um, yeah, well, the, the biofilm removal, uh, it's, it's uh, 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 one way we talk about uh, pathogens in, in the irrigation water. Um, uh, the, the biofilm removal, uh, then we talk about uh, removing the breeding ground of those pathogens uh, when you uh, use a lot of other uh, disinfectants they uh, kill the pathogens in the irrigation water but um, they don't remove the biofilm in your irrigation line which means uh, you're actually you're not solving or, or uh, let's say yeah you're not solving the origin of the problem so you're not so, breaking the life cycle, are you? You're, yeah. you're still leaving that breeding ground, so it's going to be a continuous cycle, a cycle, a cycle. Only when you break that cycle do you get a clean run um, that's, that's going to enable you to eradicate the problem rather than just treating, constantly treating the symptoms, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And, and that is what we are aiming to do. Uh, we, we want to prevent something, not fix something. That's right, yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, because that is, that is something uh what we see in in uh, many cases in in many companies uh, we are talking uh about working in a sustainable way uh, as we uh, produce a sustainable product um and that focus is to uh prevent a problem instead of uh fixing a problem and that with having a minimal impact uh on the environment uh, so Huasan breaks down in, in water and oxygen, so uh, you don't have any uh, harmful uh, residues or byproducts or, or any side effects uh, compared to other products like uh, chlorine, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and just on that, guys, I want to um, I want to make it perfectly clear because I'm sure we've got a lot of people uh, involved in the cannabis industry whose ears pricked right up when they heard us say that it is silver stabilized. Um, this process eradicates most of the silver um, through the stabilization process. There's only very minute traces of silver and uh, this silver does not cause uh, hermaphrodites or any kind of uh, hermes in your plants. So the, the level of, uh, of silver is, is that low uh, that actually you can uh, yeah, well almost forget it, let's say, in your uh, sample. And that's giving you an actual reading uh, how much PPM is in the sample. Yeah. So those are the two ways uh, that they test uh, who was on in the water. Yeah. yeah. Ivan. Thanks for your time today. It's been an amazing product and an yeah. amazing spotlight. Guys, please get in touch with us at CanHub if you want to learn more about Huasan and how it can really help to tidy up your operation and keep you guys growing uh, as clean and crisp as possible. Ivan, thanks again for your time. Absolutely yeah. amazing. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Ivan. Thanks. Thank Cheers. you. Bye-bye. I'm Marco Jimenez with Green Bros. We produce some of the finest harvest processing systems in the world. And today we're going to harvest some Blue Dream. Here at Green Bros, we are experts in post cultivation processing, and we know how to retain the value of your flower as well as save you money in the process. 
Real magic can happen with careful management of the flower between harvest and sale. This is the phase you can either gain or lose value. Maintaining premium flower starts with hang drying the harvested plants. Why is this important? When you hang dry, you're not disturbing the flower. Everything in the amazing flower you have spent so much effort cultivating remains intact and it has a chance to stabilize in its purest form before further processing. You are simply cutting branches or hanging whole plants and all the glory that was in your flower when you grew it. The Model M produces a commercial scale throughput while providing the same level of hand trimmed care you see in a small medical farm or a home grow operation. This method produces a premium flower and increases the value. The flip side is when handling wet flowers, you're popping open the wet trichomes and smearing those wet trichomes in with the bleeding chlorophyll. It's just an ugly mess and the terpene profile and trichomes cannot be recovered, which diminishes the value. After drying, we recommend finding passionate artisans dedicated to the quality of the flower throughout the curing and finishing phase. Carefully off-gassing and burping are all part of retaining the correct moisture level in the flower during the curing process. After all, moisture is not only freshness and a rich terpene profile that creates a higher value and repeat buyers, but it's weight, and weight is money in your pocket. Using this process, your flower will be perfectly prepared for efficient manicuring in the Green Bros Model M dry trimmer. Our Model M gently simulates a hand cut finish and is as close as you can get with an automated system. Congratulations, now you've created the highest valued finished product. You save loads of time and money, all while protecting your flower the way only Green Bros can. Thanks for listening and happy harvesting. Welcome back folks. Thank you Marco Jimenez from Green Bros. A really, really cool tech tip there on the best way to trim for dried flower. Jim, where are we at brother? Well, we're at the end, my friend. Uh, the end of what a, another fantastic show. Thoroughly enjoyed myself, and I hope the guys out there have all enjoyed themselves as well. Love it. Remember, guys, if you like the show, give us a subscribe, hit the bell, give us a share. If you see us in the street, give us five pounds or that's money, baby, wherever's appropriate. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Cannon Show. Thank you everybody, take care.